All right, in the previous video, I talked a little bit about how the normal force can change. And so let's go ahead and try to work through a problem. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to, to stop and take some time to uh, see if you can work this out for yourself. But we have a mass of 25 kilograms, and let's assume that this is on a horizontal surface. Um, so there will be a normal force point directly up. And our tension force that we, you know, maybe we attach a, a, a string to it and we pull upwards and the maybe there's a newton meter or something that i can use and i measure this value of 213 newtons for my tension force at an angle of 70 degrees above the horizontal x axis so the drawing that i have here shows that the normal force is significantly shorter than the force of gravity but we also should know that our acceleration is zero in the y direction we don't really care what's happening in the x direction so much Right now, we're just talking about the normal force, so we'll keep it to the y direction talk. Um, and so the question I have is, what is the normal force on this? How can I calculate the normal force, and what is its magnitude? What is the normal force? Now, looking at this problem, I can kind of see maybe a path forward, but the step-by-step -step thing that you should do is really just draw your picture, draw a free body diagram, then decompose any vectors. And once you've decomposed your vectors, look at what's happening in your uh, direction of interest and use one of Newton's laws. Here we can see that our acceleration in the y direction is zero, so this should imply that we should use Newton's first law of motion, which is the sum of forces, or F net, is equal to zero. So, um, First thing I would do if I were you is go ahead and draw a free body diagram. I will give you just a moment to try to work that out and we'll get back in a few seconds. So hopefully you had a chance to try to work on that. Um, the normal force, or sorry, the free body diagram we should be drawing looks like this. There's our dot, here's our normal force, there's our tension force, and our force of gravity. We're concerned about this tension force and so in the AP exam, um, when we decompose a vector, we should not, 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 not ever decompose our vector in a free body diagram. Do it off to the side. So to decompose this vector t, um, I will look at my angle and I will see, okay, I have a little bit in this x direction and I have a lot of bit in this y direction. I will call ty, I will call that tx at the bottom and my angle here I will call theta. So I can see that this ty is the opposite and so our um, little mnemonic that we use which is SOKATOA tells us sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So ty and our hypotenuse is going to be t, um, our opposite is going to be ty and then to get sine theta we'd say, or sorry, to uh, do this calculation we'd say sine theta is equal to our opposite, ty, over our hypotenuse, t. I can multiply both sides by t. My t's cancel on the right side of my equal sign, and that tells me that my t sine theta is equal to my ty magnitude. So now I know the amount of force that is going in this y direction from my tension force, uh, because I know what my tension force is, and I know what theta is, and so I can calculate that. I also know what my mass is, and I know g all the time, at least near the surface of Earth, and so I can calculate what my force of gravity is. But how do I put that all together? Well, that's when we have to use Newton's law. So to start out with, um, first thing we should do is we should write out our statement of Newton's first law. Here it is. Sum of forces as a vector is equal to zero vector. The next thing that we need to do is we need to pick apart that sum of forces. We need to see what forces are acting in the y direction and what forces are not. And then we need to list all those forces um, and in order or however we want. Um, but we'll list those forces and set them equal to zero. So I'll give you just a few moments to work on that um, and we'll get back to you in just a second. All right, so you should have a list of vectors in front of you um, and it should look something like this. Normal force plus our tension force in the y direction, plus our force of gravity is equal to zero. Again, these are vectors, so we don't have to worry about pluses and minuses at this point. But when we go into our, uh, our new world, with the, from the vector world to the scalar world, we do need to consider that stuff. And so I'll draw a coordinate system right up there, the upper left side, and there we are. Positive is, y is in the up direction and positive x is in the right direction. And so uh, the next step would be to go ahead and move down to the next line of algebra by pulling out the negative signs. Uh, and so you can so write out your, 
your scalar equation below that vector equation. And I'll give you just a moment to do that as well. All right, once again, um, hopefully we got that done, but we have our normal force that's in the positive direction, so it stays positive. Uh, tension force is also positive, and our gravity force points in the negative direction, so there it is. Normal plus tension in the y direction minus Fg. We know what our tension forces are, and um, or how to express our Ty force in terms of our tension force T, and we also know an equation for Fg. So the next step would be for you to go ahead and write out what the um, the equations for Ty and Fg are, the ones that we found. So go ahead and do that, and um, get back to you. All right, now that you've gotten that, you should have a normal force plus a Ty force, which is T times sine theta. And theta is the 70 degree angle that we are pulling with um, above the x-axis. And we are subtracting from that our mass times gravity. And when we do all that math, we should get the value of zero. We are trying to solve for the normal force. And so from here, it's pretty um, straightforward. We just have to isolate that n. And to do that, we will subtract a t sine theta and we will add a mass times gravity. And we do that to, whoops, we do that to both sides of the equal sign. So I subtract T sine theta and we add mg. And my next step is to rewrite this stuff as my normal force equal to mg minus T sine theta. So from here, um, it's going to be pretty straightforward for calculations. You just got to plug some numbers into a calculator. I'll give you a second to do that and you can try your luck at the answer. All right, so if you plug that in, you should get something around ooh, um, we have about 49.8, so I'll call it about 50 newtons. And it tells us that um, if normal force is 50 newtons, and we know what our um, tension force is, 213 times sine of 70 degrees, you can see that that's, um, if you plug that into a calculator, somewhere really, really close, um, E sub y is somewhere really close to around 200 newtons. And so our answer for gravity, if we were to try to find that, is just the 200 plus 50, uh, 250 newtons. And if we look up, we see 25 mass or 25 kilograms for our mass times 10 meters per second squared. That's 250. And so we have balanced forces. Everything is great. And our answer is 50 newtons. All right, we'll see you in the next one.